Welcome to Color Me Green, a podcast focused on making the world a greener place. I just want to say I am so sorry for being gone last week. I fully intended on sticking to my calendar, but unfortunately I was sick and was like losing my voice and it just wasn't a great time. And no, I didn't have COVID. It was just a cold. I tested negative, so we're all good. Anyway, I mentioned last month in episode 11, focusing on the water project, that I wanted to try and feature a charity or organization every month that helps the environment or helps people or animals through sustainable actions. These would all be organizations that you could personally contribute to if it calls to you. This month's organization, we are going to learn about Trees for Jane. I'm going to get into a little about who Jane Goodall is and why what she does matters, and then we will get into her project, Trees for Jane, and see what good they're doing and how we can help them on their journey. Also, at the end of the episode, stay tuned for what we're all probably waiting for, the winner of the giveaway. Jane Goodall was born on April 3rd, 1934 in London, England. Her interest in animal behavior began when she was just a kid. In her free time, she would observe birds and animals, taking notes and sketches while also reading up on zoology and ethology. As a child, she also dreamed of traveling to Africa to observe exotic animals in their natural habitats. After graduating in 1952, Jane found work as a secretary at Oxford University and at a London-based documentary film company to help fund her trip to Africa. If there are any words in this entire show that I mess up or say wrong or struggle with, please don't make fun of me. I'm trying my best. I'm actually using Google to help me pronounce the words because there are just some things that a girl cannot pronounce, okay? In the late 1950s, Jane visited Kenya, where through friends she met anthropologist Louis Lakey, the curator of the Corindon Museum in Nairobi. Lakey hired Jane as a secretary and invited her to participate in an anthropological, 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 that does not sound right, an anthropological dig, that still does not sound right, an anthropological dig at a site rich in fossilized prehistoric remains of early ancestors of humans. Lakey had an interest in chimpanzees. Few studies of them had been successful, due to either the size of the safari scaring the chimps, producing unnatural behaviors, or the observers spending too little time in the field to gain enough knowledge. Lakey believed that Jane had the right temperament to spend the long-term isolation in the wild. Due to Jane not having any formal scientific education or even a general college degree, many experts were against Lakey's decision. However, Jane agreed to attempt the study. In July of 1960, Jane arrived at Lake Tanganyika in the Gambi Stream Reserve of Tanzania, Africa, to begin her study of chimpanzees. Her first attempts failed as she couldn't get any closer than 500 yards before the chimps got scared away. In another attempt, Jane established non-threatening patterns of observation in which she would appear at the same time every morning on the high ground near their feeding area. Within a year, she was able to move as close as 30 feet to their feeding area, and after two years, the chimps showed no fear of her and even went to her in search of bananas. After being accepted by the chimps, Jane established a term she called the banana club, which is a daily systematic feeding method she used to gain trust and obtain a more thorough understanding of the chimps' everyday behavior. Using this method, Jane was able to imitate the chimps' behavior, spend time in the trees, and eat their foods. By doing this, she was able to discover numerous behaviors that had previously gone unobserved. She found that chimps have a complex social system with ritualized behaviors in primitive but discernible communication methods, including a primitive language system containing more than 20 individual sounds. Jane had been credited with making the first recorded observations of chimps eating meat, and using and making tools, which was thought to be exclusively a human trait. She also found that chimps throw stones as weapons, use touch and embraces to comfort each other, and they develop long-term familial bond. She even found examples of chimps stalking, killing, and eating large insects, birds, and some bigger animals. 
all of which had been previously unknown since chimps were thought to be exclusively vegetarian. Clearly we see Jane has gone above and beyond what everyone thought she was capable of, and she has helped us learn more about a species so closely related to our own. After years of in-field research, Jane received a PhD in ethology from Cambridge University in 1965. She held a visiting professorship of psychiatry at Stanford University from 1970 to 1975. And in 1973, she was appointed a long-term position of honorary visiting professor of zoology at a university in Tanzania. After attending a conference in Chicago in 1986 that focused on the ethical treatment of chimpanzees, Jane began focusing on educating the public about the endangered habitats of chimps and the unethical treatment of those that are used for scientific research. In 1977, Jane founded the Jane Goodall Institute, created in order to continue her chimpanzee research as well as expand efforts on chimp protection, conservation, and environmental education. In 1994, Jane began community conservation work in western Tanzania, Known as the Lake Tanganyika Catchment Reforestation and Education Program, this program was designed as a pilot project to address poverty and support sustainable livelihoods in villages around Lake Tanganyika, while also addressing the rapid degradation of natural resources, especially those in the remaining indigenous forests. That leads us to 2021. Jane Goodall has launched Trees for Jane in September of this year, joining a global effort to combat climate change by planting a trillion trees by 2030. The global mission for Trees for Jane is to help everyone to support broad-scale community-based forest protection and restoration efforts. They want to inspire people everywhere to plant and care for their own trees. Trees for Jane raises funds to support the planet's forests. Planting one tree might seem like a small thing to do when faced with such a big crisis. Trees for Jane selects forest protection projects that emphasize local cooperation and partners with organizations like Women's Earth Alliance, Global Forest Generation, International Tree Foundation, One Tree Planted, and the Rainforest Trust, just to name a few. Trees for Jane focuses efforts on what is needed most and where it'll do the most good. And with that, I found this quote from Jane herself about Trees for Jane. Each one of us can make a difference. We can all be a part of the solution. By protecting, restoring, and planting trees, we can help save our climate while creating a better world for all living creatures. So please join our Trees for Jane campaign. We have no time to lose. Let's create a sustainable world for generations to come. Let's give our planet a new reason for hope. If you are interested in learning more about Trees for Jane, or if you are interested in joining me and helping protect our forests, I'll be leaving the campaign's link and the donation tab link in the show notes. Now, in the last episode, I announced a giveaway, and the winner is, drumroll please, Carrie Ramirez. I have already messaged her on Instagram, so congrats to Carrie. I hope you enjoy all of your new, fun, sustainable products. I hope you love them as much as I do. I want to thank you for listening to today's episode of Color Me Green. New episodes are going to come out weekly, and hopefully each one has something you can take away and learn from. I currently have a ton of episodes planned, but if you want to request a certain topic to discuss, please feel free to message me on the show's Instagram at Color Me Green Podcast, linked in the show notes. If you loved today's episode, please make sure to leave a review, as I will be randomly picking reviews every week as they roll in to read on the show. One of the best ways to help change the world is to share this episode with a friend and let them also learn what they can do to live more sustainably. And as always, remember to reduce, reuse, recycle, and live green. See you next week.